Topics 4.1 to 4.4, part one, cell signaling, the big picture. What are ligands? Cell signaling involves three phases, list them. What happens during the transduction and response phases of cell signaling? How is the mechanism of steroid nonpolar hormones different from that of water soluble hormones? I'm Mr. W from learn-biology.com where we believe that interaction and feedback is what leads to deep substantial learning. We're so sure of that that we provide a money back guarantee that comes with your subscription. Cells are constantly communicating with one another. It's a basic feature of life. Cells are never really on their own. They're always in populations or they're in multicellular organisms. So there's direct cell-to-cell -cell communication that you see here where there's some kind of junction between two adjacent cells and molecules can pass between those two cells and that enables one cell to change the behavior of the other. There's also communication that happens through signals. So here you have a cell that's producing a molecule. It's secreting that molecule into the bloodstream or into the extracellular fluid and that message is going to be picked up by a target cell. These signals are known as ligands, and there are basically two kinds. If the ligand, the signal, is traveling a long distance through the bloodstream from a gland to another part of the body, that's called a hormone. When cells are in relatively close proximity to one another, they produce local regulators, and that's for short distance cell-to-cell -cell communication. What are ligands? Ligands are signaling molecules. Many ligands are hormones, and we'll discuss some in depth in this review. What they do is they bind with receptors based on complementary shape. And here I've represented that very simply with a kind of circle and an arc. But because this is biology, you know that the shapes will be extraordinarily complex, like enzymes and substrates. Binding leads to a cellular response, and the mechanism by which that happens is going to be most of what we're going to talk about in this video. What is quorum sensing? This is a kind of cell communication that's seen in biofilm formation in bacteria. And if this seems out of context, these are films that can form, for example, on your teeth, leading to the buildup of plaque. What happens is that bacteria, so here's a single cell, be like one of these over here, what they do is they release signaling molecules, shown over here at number two, and those bind to cytoplasmic receptors. So those are receptors that are actually inside the cell, they're not on the membrane surface. When the signal exceeds a certain intensity, so when there's a lot of cells around, that's a quorum, and those signals will be binding with the receptors, and that will activate genes. And that gene activation will lead to the expression of, for example, in this case, it looks like what these cells are doing is they're producing a biofilm, a polysaccharide that forms that biofilm. What's the takeaway? Twofold. The first is that all cells communicate, even bacteria. And the second is that you should brush your teeth so that you don't get a buildup of biofilm leading to plaque. At learn-biology.com, we understand why students struggle with AP Bio. It's a hard course, but we have a plan for your success. Go to learn-biology.com, sign up for a free trial, and complete our interactive tutorials and interactive AP Bio exam reviews. We guarantee you a four or a five on the AP Bio exam. See you on learn-biology.com. Cell signaling involves three phases. List them. The three phases are reception of a ligand, that's what's happening over here. There's signal transduction, where the initial message gets changed into another kind of message that can go into the cytoplasm that often involves amplification of the signal. And finally, there's a cellular response. We're now going to expand on the material in the previous slide. What happens during the reception phase of cell signaling? The signal molecule, also called a ligand, as we've talked about before, binds with a receptor molecule. Here you can see a receptor that has a more realistic depiction, and you can see how it's embedded in the phospholipid bilayer of the cell membrane. That binding is based on complementary shape. What happens during the transduction and response phases of cell signaling? The receptor during the transduction phase interacts with membrane proteins to produce a second messenger. So something will be happening between here and other proteins in the membrane to bring about this second messenger. The second messenger 
with other relay molecules will bring that message to the cytoplasm, activating enzymes, or the nucleus where we'll have the activation of genes. How is the mechanism of steroid nonpolar hormones different from that of water soluble hormones? The hormones we've talked about so far, the cell communication mechanisms we've talked about, have all involved water soluble hormones. But what if the hormone is nonpolar, a steroid hormone like estrogen or testosterone? In that case, these hormones, which are nonpolar, can diffuse through the phospholipid bilayer. And once they're there, they can bind with a cytoplasmic receptor. That forms a receptor hormone complex, and that is capable of diffusing into the nucleus where it acts as a transcription factor, something we'll talk about in AP Bio Unit 6. But all you need to know for now is that that can activate genes. So the DNA gets made into RNA, the RNA goes into the cytoplasm, it gets read by a ribosome, and gets made into a protein. Water-soluble hormones, they're capable of binding with receptors, they interact with uh, second messengers, and they bring about a cellular response. And in general, these responses are slower, but more longer lasting. These responses are quicker. Want to learn more? Sign up for a free trial of the website that guarantees your AP Biology success, learn-biology.com, and watch this next video.